thank you that we are standing on the solid rock. I've got a fortress in the flood. I've got a shelter in the storm. My refuge is the Lord. I've got a faith inside the fight. I've got a weapon in the war. My refuge is the Lord. Come on, sing with me, God. God, my solid rock. Sure thing that I've got. I'm not moving no matter what. I'm standing on this solid rock. I've got a name that never fails. I've got a name above it all. My banner is the Lord. The only cornerstone, Jesus, today and forevermore. My banner is the Lord. Come on, sing it out with me. God, my solid rock, <laughs> the only sure thing that I've got. I'm not moving, no matter what. Standing on the solid rock Since I am standing on the sure foundation I'm gonna praise Him, praise the Lord Since it's a kingdom that cannot be shaken I'm gonna praise Him Praise the Lord Since I am standing on a sure foundation I'm gonna praise Him Praise the Lord Since it's a kingdom that cannot be shaken I'm gonna praise Him Praise the Lord God my solid rock The only sure thing That anybody's got I'm not moving No matter what I'm standing on This solid rock Since I am standing Since I am standing on A sure foundation I'm gonna praise Him, praise the Lord Since it's a kingdom that cannot be shaken I'm gonna praise Him, praise the Lord Woo! Come on, we are standing on a firm foundation We are standing on the solid rock for taking a stand for life. Come on, let's welcome Senator Josh Hawley, come on. Hey, 
It's so good to see you. It's awesome to be here, isn't it? Worship the Lord here in our nation's capital. I tell you what, two years ago, two years ago this month, we were right here. It was right before the vote in the United States Senate to confirm Amy Coney Barrett as the next Supreme Court Justice. And I remember we gathered here on a Saturday or Sunday before the vote in that building. We prayed, we prayed that this would be a turning point moment for our country and a turning point moment in the fight for life. And two years later, Roe versus Wade is gone. It's gone. Let's thank the Lord for that. Let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for this breakthrough. You talk about a breakthrough. People say, how did it happen? It's a miracle. Nobody thought, nobody thought when Amy Coney Barrett was getting confirmed, nobody thought that Roe was about to be gone. Nobody thought that. They said it wouldn't happen. They said it'd be decades away. They said it wouldn't happen ever, ever. And they say now, how did, they still can't figure it out. How did it happen? You and I know how it happened. It happened because of Jesus. That's why it happened. It's a breakthrough. It was a breakthrough. But we need more breakthrough in our country, amen? We need more. And I don't know about you, but I'm here today for just one reason. I wanna see the fire of revival fall on the United States of America. I wanna see it. I wanna see it start here. I wanna see it start in our lives. Because you know, you can have all the programs in the world. You can have elect all of the people in the world. And yeah, we need to elect good people for sure. And we need to have, you know, folks who are gonna go and fight for us, amen to that. But you know what? There is nothing, nothing that can substitute for the fire of God as it falls in revival, amen? You know, I've been, um, I've been thinking recently just about what it looks like to have that fire, what it looks like to seek the fire of God. And I was, I was reminded of a story about David towards the end of David's life, the end of David's kingship. There was a plague that struck the nation of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. Do you remember this story? It's in 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 24. And there's a plague that begins to afflict Jerusalem. And David turns to the Lord and he says, Lord, what do I do? And you know, we've got a lot of plagues that are afflicting our country right now. We got a lot of confusion out there. We've got a lot of, of addiction out there. We've got the highest suicide rate in decades. We've got the highest drug addiction rate of any of our lifetimes. We've got people telling kids in schools that they're not, shouldn't be the gender that they are and they need to go change their gender and they need to go change this and that and they're not good who God made them. We've got people being told that our country is systemically evil and that the Bible is about oppression when in fact the Bible is about liberation, amen? Jesus is about freedom. We've got all kinds of confusion and all kinds of darkness and all kinds of isolation and all kinds of loneliness in our country. We've got plagues afflicting our country. What did David do? What did David do when he saw the plague? What it says in 2 Samuel 24 is, he went to where the plague was and he set up an altar. He went and he set up an altar. And then what did he do? And then he offered sacrifices. You know, a principle of the kingdom is fire falls on sacrifice. Fire falls on sacrifice. And you know what David said is he's coming to the place where he saw the angel to stop the plague. As he's coming to the place, the man who owned the ground comes out to him and he says, King David, I'll give it to you. You want to set up an altar here? You want to offer a sacrifice? I'll give it to you. And what does David say? David says, I will not offer sacrifices that cost me nothing. Come on. So here's the question. What are we willing to offer the Lord today? Fire falls on sacrifice. What are we willing? What sacrifice are we willing to see the fire of God fall in our lives? What sacrifice are we willing to offer to see the fire of God fall in this country? Are we willing to offer a sacrifice of our witness to make a bold stand for the Lord where we live, where we work? Are we willing to offer a sacrifice of praise to say, I'm gonna get praise that costs me something. I'm gonna get praise that's from the bottom of my heart. Are we willing to offer the Lord a sacrifice of courage? In this hour when if you say, I'm for the Lord, I'm with Jesus, they'll persecute you, they'll mock you, They'll try and silence you. They'll try and cancel you. Are we willing to say that we will offer, for, offer the Lord a sacrifice of courage? Are we willing to give the Lord our lives? Because I tell you this, my conviction is, as you look at the scripture, revival begins when sacrifice is offered and the sacrifice the Lord wants is our lives. 
The sacrifice the Lord wants is our hearts. And if you look at the end of that David story, 2 Samuel 24, you know what it says? It says when David offered the sacrifices, it ends with, and the plague was averted. So I just want to say to you tonight, are you out there? Do you want to have the fire of the Lord in your life? Do you want more? Do you want to have the experience, maybe for the first time, the fire of God, the presence of God, the purpose of God, the holiness of God? If you want that, lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands in praise. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, thank you that you are a God of fire. Thank you that you are the God of revival. Thank you that you are the God of change. Thank you that you want change for our lives, that you want fire for our lives, and that you want to to fall on our lives as sacrifice and through us to ignite a revival in this country, the likes of which we have never seen. Lord, we offer our lives to you today anew. We offer all that we are, Lord. We offer our words, we offer our praise, we offer our courage, we offer our lives. Lord, would you come and fill us? Lord, would you come and change us? Lord, would you come and change this country? In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Hey, before you leave, thank you so much. How many love that? Was that amazing? How many are grateful for men and women like this that love God and serve in our government? We've been praying all day across DC. You know, for those that don't know, we've gathered in the morning at the Lincoln Memorial, then we gathered in front of the White House. Yes, that was us, the crazy people. We prayed over the White House, we prayed over the president, the vice president, all that, and then we went to the Supreme Court and we're here. And I just feel like a big part of our, of our calling and mandate is to bless our government, to pray for our officials. So Josh, as a sitting U.S. Senator, um, we, we want to pray over him tonight and let our prayers be an extension over, over our nation. You know, we know these guys, the pressure they're under, uh, the, 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 the oppression that comes over them, the heaviness, the, the weights that they carry. Let's just pray right now. Come on, extend your hand. And this is according to... Uh, just to help you guys that uh, struggle with this whole weird Christian nationalism thing, let me just read this from the Bible just to help clear it up for you. It says, uh, 1 Timothy 2, verse 1, First of all, then I urge petitions and prayers and intercessions and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet lives in all godliness and dignity. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. All right? So there's your, there's your theological president. Extend your hand. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for Senator Hawley, God. We thank you for his team, God. We thank you for his courageous stand, Lord. We thank you that you have men and women like him all inside of that Capitol building, Lord, inside the Senate, the House. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that your presence can go wherever it wants to. And we thank you right now that you're filling those buildings. You're filling their homes. We thank you, you're filling the Supreme Court. You're filling the White House. No one can escape your love. No one can escape your presence. And so we just pray, God, today, Lord, that us being here, that it wouldn't just be a big rah-rah worship, rah-rah loud thing, but that in the spirit, we would accomplish something that things would change, that oppression would be lifted off, that the garment of praise would come on instead of the spirit of despair. And we thank you, Lord, that leading up to these midterms, we are gonna see a miracle across America. Miracle upon miracle upon miracle upon miracle. And we thank you, Lord, that you would raise up men and women just like Josh to run for office, to penetrate the darkness of the governmental arena. And we promise to pledge our support behind them. In Jesus' name, someone say amen. All right, y'all ready to worship? So honored to have Melody here with me, Jasmine here with me. We Listen, it's about to get wild today. Can you guys hang with us for three hours? Come on. We don't like, like, like Josh said, we don't want to give an offering that costs us nothing. So come on, let's go for it. Come on, put your hands together like this. Come on, there we go. Come on, how many can hear the Liberty Bells ringing over Washington, D.C.? Come on! Come on, sing this with me, with everything you got.
a shot of praise tonight. Come on.
sing it out. And yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory. Now listen, 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 listen tonight. I know so many of you that are here, it was a battle to get here. It's always a battle to come and worship in DC. It's always expensive, it's over-regulated, it's ridiculous, and it, 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 the sacrifice is costly. The airlines broke my guitar on the way here. Every time we come, it's a fight. Because you know what? The devil doesn't want you worshiping over this city. The devil doesn't want you proclaiming the truth of Jesus over this city. But guess what? You made it. You made it. Turn to someone and say, you made it. And guess why we're here? To remind the powers and the principalities, your time is over. Come on, somebody. We're here to remind them your season of ruling and reigning in darkness, in violence, in perversion, in the Antichrist spirit. Your time is over. Y'all with me? This is, 
This is good stuff. Here, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna strike the ground like this. Come on, come on, get, get out your prophetic. Yeah, we're gonna strike the ground. We're here in the National Mall. Yes, everybody that's watching, we're crazy. We believe the Bible. So we're just gonna say strike, 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 strike. And we're gonna go to 10. We're gonna go to 10. Okay, and, on, and after we do 10, I don't know why 10, it sounds good. Because that would be 20, 30, oh Lord. Okay, we're gonna strike 10 times. And on the 10th time, we're gonna lift up a shout. We're gonna believe. We're gonna believe something is gonna shift. Come on, are you guys with me? This represents every single state in America. This represents the hope of the world, really. So come on, on the count of three, we're gonna go strike 10 times. Here we go, here we go. One, two, three, here we go, come on. Strike, 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 keep going, strike, 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 str
Him tonight. Come on, just thank Him. Just thank Him. Just thank Him. Listen there. I'm, I'm so encouraged because there's so many heroes in the faith that have been praying and interceding and pressing in way longer than I've been alive. For the reverse of Roe v. Wade for the shift in the nation. This is one of my pastors, Charles Stock from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Maybe the most joyful human being I've ever met. And I wanted him to come and share with us. All right. So good to be here. This is amazing. Two years ago, in the rain, something happened. Justice Coney, Amy Coney Barrett was confirmed, and the rest is history. Not It was just her, but it's all these little parts. And I want to talk about what happened this year from what was sown two years ago. The Dobbs decision that, that evacuated Roe v. Wade as a federal standard to be imposed on all states. So amazing. It happened. And it's going to impact the future in ways that are beyond our imagination. It happened, it was announced on June 24th at 1010 a.m. None of this is an accident. At 1010 a.m., murdering an unborn human being was announced that it's not a constitutional right in the United States of America. Why 1010 a.m.? Why not 1009? Why not 115? But it was 1010. Immediately I thought of John 1010. It's a prophetic statement. The thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that they might have life and they would have it abundantly, overflowing. It's a restoration of what was lost. Happened 49 years, 49 years from the original Roe v. Wade decision, marking that we're moving into a jubilee season of restoration. Our nation had the blood of officially sanctioned murder of over 63 million babies, and that's just the ones that were counted. And here's the amazing thing. You're forgiven. You are forgiven because He delights to show mercy. When we repent, when we seek His face, when we humble ourselves, when we turn from our wicked ways, He hears from heaven, forgives our sins, and heals our land. We're believing that because Jesus is the mediator of a better covenant, a new covenant, and His blood speaks a better word than the blood of Abel or the blood of, of slaughtered infants. His blood is speaking over us. Forgive them. Forgive them. So what's next? What will it look like? What's, what's going forward? What will it look like? It's... <laughs> we're moving into Jubilee. We're, and this is so amazing how this unfolds. Do you know the leak? The Supreme Court leak, unprecedented. Well, you know, isn't that like those prophetic whispers that were whispering before the incarnation of the Word of God? All through history, there were, there were these whispers of something that was going to happen, and it came. Isn't it? I, I mean, God just flipped it on His head. And then it was announced at June 24th, using our numbering system, 624. Why not? This, this has to do with the United States. 624. I thought of Numbers 624, the first line of the Aaronic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. And I just want to declare that's what's ahead. Though it's just a seed sown, it seems it's a small crack in all the issues facing us. We have the assurance of God that He is blessing and keeping His people in this land, and He will bless and protect this land. Uh, now, here's a wild one. I began to wonder, why June 24th? 
June 24th, and I didn't know this because it's not my background, but I looked up June 24th in, in, uh, in tradition, you know, the historic church, Catholic church, Orthodox church, June 24th is the feast of the nativity of John the Baptist, the forerunner who worshiped in the womb. He worshiped Jesus in the womb, leaping for joy. John the Baptist, even before he was born, demonstrated there is not only life and dignity, but there is spirit and awareness in the womb. He worshiped, he leapt for joy, and his mother was filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, there, this is, you couldn't make this up. At, at his birth, so here's what does it look like going forward. At his birth, his father, Zechariah, who had been mute, just like we've talked about. Why are the churches mute? Why haven't they spoken up? Why, why aren't they celebrating? Well, they're going to. Because Zechariah, whose name means, I mean, you could stretch this to mean, it means the memory of the Lord, the memory of Yahweh. It means remembering the promises of God. What did the angel say to him? Gabriel said, Zechariah, your prayers have been answered. And he's thinking like, what prayers? You know, how do how can it? And so he had to shut up for a while. But after John the Baptist was open, he recovered his voice. So what's happening? There's a recovery of the voice in the national narrative of the United States. It's all, I mean, it's hinged on, it seems like such a small thing, but it's like this crack of light at the beginning of day. And Zechariah prophesied the day spring and declared his son that he would be the forerunner, that he would walk in the, in the ministry of Elijah. And so what's being loosed here through this decision, I believe is a John the Baptist ministry of Elijah that we're gonna see, we're gonna see the prophets of Baal destroyed. We're going to see the Jezebel spirit cast down from her high place. I'm just declaring this. So what, so what is it going forward? What's been released here is a John the Baptist moment forerunning a burning lamp. That, I mean, he was the last and the greatest of the Old Testament prophets, but, his, but when he was asked who he was, he said, I'm a voice. We are recovering our voice in the national narrative and in the world stage. I'm declaring it over you that this generation we're looking at that has, has, been, has been so damaged by a false narrative to, that they don't know what a, they don't know if they're a boy or a girl. I mean, recently, our most recent Supreme Court justice was confirmed, and she could not define what a woman was. I want to tell you, every three-year-old knows what a woman is. So I'm just saying, let's get going here. But there's a voice, and what's the voice doing? It's crying out, "Prepare the way." It's crying out a turning back to the Lord. It's crying out repentance, which means a renewal, transformation of the mind of the perception. I'm telling you, there's a shift. And it may, I mean, it may be like, well, it took 30 years before John and Jesus manifested who they were, but it was coming. And I'm telling you right now, it's coming. The voice is being restored and it heralds a new season. So I think I'll just stop there. But I do want to say we're going to see the end of sexual perversity and the sacrifice of infants. We are going to see it. We're not going to stop with one decision and apologize because it might make someone feel bad. But we're going to say that the tide has turned. So I just want to reach, just lift your hands. I just want to declare something over you. God, we just thank you for the jubilee that's coming. We thank you for good news to the poor, healing to the brokenhearted, liberty to the captives. We thank you for the opening of prison to the bound, the recovery of the sight to the blind. And we thank you for the year of the Lord's favor, which is jubilee, and the vengeance of the Lord, which belongs to him, not us. It's a hallelujah. And I want to declare that lost voices are restored. Can we just say this, that our voice will be restored. 
the voice will be restored in pulpits across America, but not just pulpits, in conversations and coffee shops and backyard barbecues. The voice of the Lord is going to be restored and a mission movement will come from this generation that the enemy has tried so hard to destroy that will be a carrying of the gospel to the ends of the earth. God bless you. Come on, how many of you guys believe that? There was about three people that I, that I, that I knew that believed, that believed that this could happen. Charles was one of them. <laughs> and, you know, I remember I, I was gathered here in the National Mall when I was 17, and, and that's where the Lord really gave me this burden to see the death decree of Roe v. Wade overturned. It wasn't a political thing for me. It was like a mandate from heaven to pray until it happened. And things got worse. <laughs> we started praying, it was like everything got worse. And, and, and people were appointed that were horrible. And then God, out of nowhere. I mean, do you realize how crazy this is? And so anyway, when this happened, when it was finally, you know, we mobilized 40 days of prayer and worship around the Supreme Court after the decision was leaked. And then I was there in the Supreme Court the day after the decision and we were worshiping and I was so angry that there wasn't 100,000 Christians in the streets of America. I was like, this is the victory we prayed for. We can't rob God of the praise of this moment. And I was about to go on Twitter and Facebook and just rip into some people. <laughs> Seriously, I was getting my phone. My wife was like, oh no. And I felt the Lord, I felt the Holy, the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, don't do that. Instead, sing the song of life over a generation. Remind them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Imago Dei, made in the image of God. And so, this song we've been singing, Imago Day, I wanna sing it right now over the National Mall. And I wanna sing it as a representation over America. I wanna sing it over not just the unborn, but all the identity issues that a generation is battling. God made you the way that he made you on purpose. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Just lift your hands with me, just lift your hands with me. Lord, release identity over America. Release identity. Release sonship to them. Before I was formed, I was loved and adored by a father who knows me by name. You sewed me together and buried your treasure inside of a soul and a frame. Imago Dei I'm fearfully, wonderfully made Imago Dei There's glory in all you create Before my conception, my home was in heaven Then you breathed your life in my lungs Your perfect design that you purposed in time Holy made in the image of God Come on, sing this out, I am made I am made in the image of God Father Day in my Fearfully, wonderfully made in my day. There's glory in all you create. Sing it again. In my day. 
across America that are carrying a baby. Maybe they're alone. Maybe they're confused. Maybe they feel pushed into a corner. Melody's singing and worshiping tonight, carrying a baby inside of her. The first of 12. I rebuke that. In Jesus' name, Shararabasa. Just feel it. 12 tribes of Melody. But why don't you do that? I want you just to pray. It's, this, there's something so powerful about singing this with somebody that's carrying life inside of them. Just pray this over. And, and, and anybody struggling with their identity, tonight, I feel like something's going to break. So come on, just, just lift your hands up. Let's sing this. Oh, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just lift up every mother who is in here right now. Lord, we thank you for mothers. We thank you for the strong spirit that you've given mothers. I pray, Father, for just an anointing of strength, God, to raise up a generation that is after your heart. I pray, Father, for the women here and the women on live stream who are struggling um, to bear child. We ask, Father, for a breakthrough in that regard. Lord, we thank you, we thank you that children are a gift from heaven. And Lord, anybody anybody here or on live stream who has ever made the choice to have an abortion and has lived with the shame of that and have has lived with the grief of that we thank you father that there is mercy and forgiveness available through jesus christ there is mercy and forgiveness available so i ask right now god for that to be released over those those bombs for that grace to be released right now. Father, we thank you that when we repent, you are so quick to forgive. You are so quick to forgive. And Lord, I thank you for a wave of adoption that's gonna come over this nation. 
I thank you, Father, for the wave of adoption. We prophesy that tonight. Oh God, the best years are ahead of us. We know it. And that is why the devil is making such a ruckus. Because the best years are ahead of us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In the beautiful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the place where it's. May incense fill every place. Come on, just lift your hands. Let incense fill every place tonight. Let incense fill the National Mall. Let it fill Washington, D.C. Let it fill the nation tonight. The host of heaven bow In reverence they fall down The elders and the saints They cry out night and day They cry out night and day The angels round the throne Consumed with Christ alone A stream of endless praise One anthem, one refrain One anthem, one refrain Come on, sing it with me Sing in
Come on, sing with singing holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Singing holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Come on, every voice tonight. Come on, singing holy. Come on, it's the song around the throne. It's the song that they never stop singing. It's the song of the ages. It's the song that will never be stopped. It's the song that will go on and on and on and on. Come on, sing it again, sing it again, sing it again. Sing it home. Let the strings play, Allison and Antonio, just let them play. And I just want you to lift your voice, come on. Let's just join right here in this place. Let's just join with heaven. Let's just join with the sound of heaven. Let's release that as the sun sets in Washington, D.C., here in the United States of America. We're joining in this place with the sound forever around the throne of God. Come on, let's just begin to sing. Let's just begin to sing.
Come on, somebody. 
in the coming year, Lord, we thank you tonight that we're standing on a solid rock. And we're going to sing and we will not be moved. 